Hello and welcome to my channel on Ancient and Chinese Astrology. I am professional astrologer Zagata from the website 100%astrology.com and in this video I would like to examine the topic of the sidereal and the tropical zodiac what you are not being told. Obviously this is a very uh, hot topic for many many astrologers, very controversial. This topic causes uh, angry outbursts and uh, you know quarreling and attacks and you know threats and even so to say war and conflict between astrologers in other words these are all significations of the planet Mars the star of Mars as, as the ancient said so by way of uh, of uh, <laughs> classical medicine astrological medicine we can we can um, counter this by the principle of antipathy and this principle is namely that Mars gets defeated and count down by Venus so uh, I strongly suggest that you take some Venus into your system because this video is going to cause or could cause uh, emotional and mental pain and discomfort to uh, many students and practitioners or possibly even professionals of astrology so again this is <laughs> this is some um, homemade um, ice cream that i had before the video um, it's made up of uh, strawberries uh, sorry not strawberries raspberries and um, banana and uh, peaches and also um, coconut uh, coconut oil and uh, vanilla and uh, what else obviously yes a homemade goat milk uh, uh, both yogurt and and milk and this on top is sprinkled uh, dark chocolate so again I had this if uh, you can have some uh, some cookie or if you don't if you don't if you're not hungry you can have uh, you can read you can read poetry which is also Venusian or you could watch uh, romantic episode or, or, or movie or you, you could read a, a love story or some so, some sort of uh, some sort of uh, plot that has to do with reconciliation and unification which are significations of Venus whereas Mars severs and okay so again I this is a friendly warning so to say. Uh, please take this uh, to heart and uh, let's get started. Now, the I I uh, while having my my ice cream, I had this idea. It literally came from from above to how to how to portray how to portray what I'm trying to say and the topic in general. And this is what I came up with. Now, uh, for those that don't know, this is a very ancient. Uh, doctrine uh, it possibly most probably originated in the Mesopotamian tradition and was transferred to the Chinese tradition what I'm referring to is what we call the Holy Trinity or the Cosmic Trinity which is actually what organized religion stole but let's not get uh, deviated from the topic uh, what I'm saying is that this Holy Trinity this Cosmic Trinity is heaven and then we have man man woman doesn't matter and then we have earth so this is the cosmic trinity of chinese metaphysics and in other words with heaven we mean astrology astrology the most uh, the most perfect the first science etc the first uh, revealed knowledge etc etc of uh, and of course heaven is round as the chinese said and this is why i used such a uh, such a container for the for the ice cream because the circle is the perfect uh, it's 360 degrees it's the perfect figure perfect shape and then we have man again man woman doesn't matter which is uh, in astrology is represented by the planet mercury because this is the planet of uh, of the intellect of the of the mind of consciousness the planet of, of shamans of uh, of magicians of astrologers uh, of course if the, the if the chart of the horoscope inclines to this otherwise they can be you know bankers translators etc etc but the point is 
uh, that Mercury, I, this is where I, I put the glyph of Mercury because this is the head. And this we have always the sources say heaven comes first, then is man, woman, and then is earth. And this is this is this is bamboo here, what I used for uh, to put the ice cream on top of, and bamboo is of course earth, and this is the, the green color of earth. So in other words, uh, in ancient astrology and Chinese, especially Chinese astrology, uh, we don't say that uh, we're not dealing with uh, with complete determination because astrology, while being the most important, being heaven, there are two other factors. There is man, the, the human factor, and there is earth. The, in other words, the, the environment factor, which we measure with feng shui or with, in, in general, how the environment influences us, etc. So uh, let's uh, let's get uh, let's get into it. You see that uh, uh, the way I've uh, uh, portrayed uh, the zodiacs is again you can ha we can have the, the, the sidereal zodiac, uh, the fixed stars. In other words, this, this is coming from based on the stars. I've put it eight, as you see, because the stars are the eighth sphere. Or we can have the tropical zodiac which is based on the seasons which again which are based on the sun i mean the sun is i can't i've i was thinking of a symbol about the seasons or the calendar but i, I and the sun gold color the color of spirit etc uh, etc et so we have this uh, of course there's also a constellation of zodiac but let's uh, i will uh, the point is we're using this or that not there are some very few astrologers i will mention that I didn't even know that they uh, that they used uh, constellation of zodiac, and I wouldn't even know honestly how to <laughs> how to portray it. Uh, so anyhow, uh, the point here is that uh, uh, in, in this in the previous picture we have we have uh, how shall I put it? We have a choice. Again, the human, the man, the woman has a choice. You see the uh, uh, the spoon, the small spoon. It's not dipped into heaven, into the I mean, into the mysteries of creation, into astrology. So it it can choose sidereal, tropical, or even constellational. But again, I'm not gonna bother with constellational. However, once once the spoon gets dipped into the into the ice cream, into into heaven, into <laughs> amazing analogy, you can't. It, it's the, the the ice cream is melting. I wanted to put mercury here. On the tip of the of the spoon, I could not because again, it, it, you can't hold it because it's 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 sinking. It's it's being it, my, the way uh, the way I uh, the way I named the, the the photo as you see here is choosing or being grasped uh, by here. In this case, it's the sidereal zodiac because uh, it was the first zodiac. And uh, again, you are uh, you are it. The spoon is sinking, and again, you are uh, and not not how I how I uh, chose to portray this with uh, the stars when you get grasped uh, or when you choose a zodiac you get pulled into it and the stars in this case the sidereal become far far more important than the seasons and the sun etc and the sun is much smaller here okay this is what this is the sidereal and uh, vice versa when we uh, when we get into the tropical we get uh, grasped we get uh, uh, how shall i put it well it's kind of swallowed uh, by the sun and the stars uh, become uh, smaller and smaller. Of course, ideally, uh, I mean, ideally, not just ideally, we should use the fixed stars because they are, uh, there's no doubt about that. I mean, all the ancient astrologers said that the, the fixed stars are uh, can can turn a pauper into a king and vice versa. So they're, they're because they're the eighth sphere, they're above the planets. Uh, okay, so uh, this was as a way of, uh, of uh, illustration what I'm trying to uh, to convey. Now let uh, let me say that uh, this the purpose of this uh, of this uh, long video is not to uh, to attack any single uh, astrologer uh, or organization or um, zodiac for that matter. The purpose is as always to provide information, to educate, and to let uh, to reveal information that uh, you are not likely to hear. Uh, possibly anywhere else and I will give you many sources as always again I will I also I like to give the sources I like to follow the scientific approach of being objective of, of uh, differentiating what is fact what is history what is what is opinion what is theory so uh, 
so uh, let's get into it uh, now let's see uh, I have many sources as you see and I have also others uh, let's uh, I recommend this topic by a famous American uh, astrologer and lecturer and author Robert Hand on the invariance of the tropical zodiac uh, very uh, uh, very very uh, balanced arguments and uh, also I recommend for those that have the translation of Robert Schmidt of VTS Violence Book 1, uh, Robert Hand wrote a very, a very good introduction that also dealt with uh, the issue of the Zodiac. And uh, this is important because he himself, while he uses the Tropical Zodiac, he, he uses precession for solar and lunar returns, etc. Et et and he is one of the most uh, well-educated astrologers of the Western tradition. So uh, I recommend that the, it's, it's a long article. I will give some, uh, some important points from it. But this is, uh, this is a first source. Uh, let's see. Uh, another good source is... Uh, American astrologer and author Chris Brennan with his podcast, the, the Astrology Podcast. He had this uh, this debate six years ago. It's worth it. Uh, again, um, there are lots of also valuable comments that I will I will quote some of the comments. Of course, I will I will give the links in the description. And uh, so, what I would like to start with is. Uh, is philosophy because I will first uh, I will first examine the issue from a philosophical uh, point of view, the issue of, of the zodiacs. Then I will describe and examine the issue from the historical point of view, and finally I would I will examine the issue from the practical point of view. So uh, in terms of philosophy, uh, it is very important to know that uh, first of all. Uh, astrology uh, again as I uh, keep referring to the, to my uh, to my video uh, here is my YouTube channel ancient Chinese astrology to my video a brief history of ancient astrology because uh, I explained there that uh, while we had a very long tradition of uh, Mesopotamian astrology or Babylonian astrology Egyptian astrology Indian astrology this type of astrology was uh, very basic very uh, kind of uh, primitive and it did not deal with people it dealt with it, it was mundane astrology it was not natal astrology or for that matter electional or horary or inceptional and interrogational questions so uh, they were it was observational it was observational astrology and astronomy uh, so they were using they were watching the sky they were using the sidereal zodiac uh, however notice that this astrology has a, uh, as I'm saying, it has a very long tradition. I mentioned in again this video, brief history of ancient astrology, some that Chris Brennan quotes in his book, some actual uh, historians that claim that uh, the Babylonians have uh, had been observing uh, the heavens for uh, one account was uh, 470,000 years. Another account was over 700,000 years. I'm serious again there are quotes this does not mean it's true but we have historians claiming that and their quotes have survived and I also gave a case of of, uh, of Indian astrology in Georgish wrongly called Vedic astrology that uh, they they have case their configurations that uh, match uh, a time period of about 70,000 years before the common era Again, this was observational astrology, observational astronomy. But this has very, very little, almost nothing to do with what we are practicing, what we've, what we've been, what we have been practicing for for two thousand years. So it's it's very important to uh, to uh, to understand that astrology developed over time. It did not it did not it did not devolve, as some say, like Robert Schmidt, like Ro like Robert Kolev here in, in Bulgaria, etc. On the contrary, as, as I've showed in, in my in my video on the brief history, and also uh, the point I'm making is that these uh, these astronomers and astrologers they were watching the sky for thousands or tens of thousands or possibly more years. However, they could not calculate natal astrology. They did not exist. Now I don't know how old the tropical zodiac is. Uh, the point is is that uh, until the tropical zodiac came. 
until he sickle of the second century the greek astronomer and mathematician uh, wrote his uh, work on ascensions that allowed uh, astrologers to calculate uh, the rising sign the rising degree the ascendant and the 12 houses uh, again uh, one could say that it was a coincidence that the tropical zodiac uh, was endorsed around this time around the time of hipsico uh, in other words that there is no uh, that there is uh, there is it's just a coincidence it's there is no correlation or, or, or causation that the, the, the that the tropical zodiac if you will inspired uh, uh, astrologers astronomers to to come up with uh, with with knowledge that would allow for the development of natal astrology again we can't we can't prove this it's just it's a very interesting um, uh, coincidence if, if you will that for thousands of years there was a tradition but when the tropical zodiac started being uh, 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 endorsed and, uh, and, and, and used for, for, for not just for natal astrology as I will show we had this uh, Hellenistic astrology the first natal astrology appear and uh, we, we had this major major breakthrough in the history of astrology and Hellenistic astrology uh, influenced Indian astrology it also influenced uh, later on um, it was translated some uh, Dorotheus and others were translated and uh, uh, to, uh, to Persia to, to, uh, to the Arabic world even to China and to Japan actually um, and Chris Brennan has a has a great interview with a, with, a, with a scholar that I watched recently the interview is from 2018 November and uh, so the point is is that uh, there are some uh, some astrologers that use the sidereal zodiac i'm talking about western ancient astrology not uh, setting aside indian astrology for the, for the for the time being and it's not the purpose of this video though, although i will also give some sources uh, those astrologers with the sidereal zodiac western astrologers they uh, they have these very very fi fixed views like uh, Cyril Fagan and others like Roman Kolev and here there is a uh, there is a group here in Bulgaria that are very very vocal about this uh, Babylonian they call it Babylonian astrology being the first revealed knowledge being 7,500 7, years old again this is not astrology as we understand it astrology is at best 2100 years old or the first horoscopes that survive are from the 69 BCE and again there are just a, a few and then the others appear in the first century CE Roman uh, Roman Empire so uh, what, I, what I'm seeing is that uh, these astrologers the, uh, the sidereallists they have this uh, these fixed opinions in this uh, saying you know that the sidereal zodiac is the ideal zodiac etc well actually it's, it's, it's the opposite why well because if you study the history of uh, of astrology not just natal astrology you will see that we have uh, initially they had uh, more constellations and in fact again for thousands of years what what they were doing is they were using observational astronomy astrology but they did not have the zodiac i mean they, it was not standardized and again the history of science and as chris brennan also uh, said i mean not just him he always he always gives the sources it's just that his book is so so well um, so well sourced and so i mean he quotes many sources and translations etc so it's, it's it's a really good book in this respect uh the the zodiac did not become standardized until the fifth century bce so all those uh, uh claims again about many thousands of years uh, you know astrology that some indian astrologers say uh, vedic astrology as they call it is 5000 years old no it's not they had something and the chinese also had something and again the, the, the babylonians but and the, the egyptians but again without natal astrology without the houses without the aspects without the rulerships we don't have astrology we have something that's very primitive and uh it we have something that can be only used for kings again that's that's a fact so what i'm seeing is is that uh these sidereallists they uh, they say that well you know it's the sky the sky is primary uh, uh unless astrology matches the sky uh it's you know it's uh, so trop tropical astrology is uh is is inferior it no longer it worked kind of it was very effective when the zodiacs coincided uh which is uh second second third century of the common uh, third century exactly i will show so but then as as the as precision you know as the vernal point started to drift backwards etc it was the zodiac they got out of sync and etc etc 
Well, folks, first of all, if you if you insist on uh, on using the sky and the sky, the physical sky, I mean, as the ultimate arbiter of 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 uh, of, uh, of veracity, if you will, of uh, you know, then why are you using uh, an idealist? Uh, uh, sorry, an ide ideal zodiac, idealized version of the zodiac. Why are you not using the constellations, constellational zodiac? Because we don't have. 12, 12, 12 uh, images, 12 signs of 30 degrees in the sky. No, we don't. I mean, every astronomer, every astrologer knows this. I mean, Cancer is small, Virgo is very big, etc. So why, why are you using something that, that doesn't reflect physical reality? And yet claiming that it's physical reality that should dictate to the spiritual and not the other way around. Again, uh, this, this argument is, is simply uh, not valid. Uh, and and uh, also, even if we, again, even if we, uh, um, in fact, uh, in fact, let me uh, hear in this, uh, in the, uh, in Chris Brennan's uh, um, interview, there is a, uh, uh, there is a, uh, there is a good quote by, uh, there is a good uh, opinion by, no, it's not opinion by, by, Mark, by a Scottish, I believe, or British astrologer, Mark Cullen. He says, it's probably worth pointing out that there are still practitioners of constellational astrology in the German-speaking world following the example of Rudolf Steiner. Uh, this, again, I did not know this, but again, okay, these people, I respect these people, they are using, uh, they are staying true to, uh, to this, uh, to this idea, to this uh, belief that uh, it's the physical sky that's uh, that's uh, that's the primary factor. So we should follow this constellation of astrology. With respect to these people, okay. I, I again, uh, there, this does not survive in, in in the tradition. I mean, it's we don't have we have we have the sources from Hellenistic and uh, Persian Arabic and uh, the, Medi the the European period. Again, we don't have a single I mean famous case of, of using this. But anyhow, that uh, that's fine. I mean, it's a free world. It's it's a free choice. Uh, okay, so let's. Uh, Another thing, uh, let me, uh, as Robert Zoller taught, uh, um, uh, as the, the philosopher Plato in the 4th century repeatedly said in the Republic and in the Epinomis dialogue, we are looking for, we are not focusing on the physical sky. Don't be focusing on mathematics and the physical sky. Focus on the internal principles from which all things come. This is what we are doing. We are not, and this is why the tropical zodiac is the ideal. It's the, it's the, uh, it's the perfect zodiac in the mind. It doesn't mean it's the perfect in reality necessarily. But this is, uh, and again, speaking of this, there is a, a very good uh, quote here also in uh, Robert Hans' article from Plato. I will deal with the Ascension of Times later. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, He's quoting Valens, etc., etc. Uh, here, from uh, from Plato's Timaeus, there is this this long quote. In other words, we have this. I'm not going to read it. You can you can uh, see it. But uh, we have this uh, uh, this uh, again idea from the sidereal saying that uh, the sidereal zodiac is fixed because the vernal point uh, the vernal point is is drifting backwards. Well, again, that's the perspective from the perspective of the stars, from the perspective of the <laughs> of the seasons, it's the tropical that's fixed and I wish so the point is is that they like to uh, to uh, to declare and to promulgate that only the, this perspective. It's the it's the zor it's the the stars that are fixed, not not the seasons. I mean, it, the stars are more important than the seasons. Well, we live on earth. So it, it's a matter of perspective and most importantly, it's not my opinion. It's again, look at Plato. And as Robert Hand says, and uh, so the motion of the same and in, in, in the other or diverse, and these were perceived as moving with respect to the sphere of the primum mobile. This fact clearly demonstrates that the fixed stars were conceived as being in motion with respect to the primum mobile. The components of the primum mobile are the vernal point, the tropical zodiac, the celestial equator, the great circle, the other equinox and the solstices. Again, so uh, again, uh, I want you to be open to other perspectives, not not just have this fixed idea that it's it's this is the only truth and that's it. Again, and this is also let me say, uh, uh, such claims, you know, uh, there is only one truth, you know, there is only one revelation, etc. Uh, they really, uh, you know, uh, they, uh, they 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 stink. 
they think of, of religious fundamentalism. And again, wait a second, I thought we were astrologers, I thought we were dealing with, with the cult, with spirituals, with uh, possibly a spiritual science or possibly a sphere of cosmeternus, 4th century astrologer and uh, a lawyer says, for, uh, uh, practicing astrology fosters the worshipping of the divine. Again, fosters this connection between the man, woman and the divine. Because it's a it's a it's a high science, it's an occulted science. We don't know exactly how it works. We are we're studying the, the the effects of it, and we are, you know, being enlightened in the, in, in this way. So uh, gradually over the over the years and the decades. So uh, again, um, very important to uh, to the philosophical part is uh, is extremely important. Let me also uh, Chris also he has a good very good argument in his book from quoting Ptolemy. Uh, he's using uh, Robert Schmidt's translation of Ptolemy, which is obviously the best. Uh, but I will give you here this. I will give you this is from Robbins, I think. Uh, as Ptolemy says, again, this this is not entirely because it, I, think, I believe it's a paraphrase or something. But as you see, the beginnings of, of the science and likewise of the terms are to be taken from the equinoctical and tropical points. This rule is not only clearly stated by writers on the subject, but is also especially evident by the demonstration constantly afforded that their natures, influences and familiarities have no other origin than from the tropics and equinoxes, as has already been shown, in other words, the tropical zodiac. And if other beginnings were allowed, it would either be necessary to exclude the natures of the science from the theory of prognostication or impossible to avoid error in then retaining and making use of them and as the regularity of their spaces and distances upon which this, their influence depends would then be invaded and broken in upon, in other words, procession. So uh, this is extremely important as uh, Chris Brennan suggests because uh, Ptolemy is not just uh, endorsing obviously uh, the tropical zodiac but he is also saying that possibly some of the Again, this translation is not, uh, uh, Schmidt translated it some, a little differently, not as, not as uh, unambiguously as this, but Ptolemy is saying that the earliest writers, I mean because he's quoting other sources, possibly uh, had also this position on the matter. So we could, if this is true, mm -hmm. we could say that the early authors were tropicalists, not sidereelists. Again, I understand uh, it's not as simple as that. I'm talking about the philosophical uh, part first. I will show many, many charts from the tradition. You will see that, uh, again, it's not as simple as that because they were using the sidereal zodiac, but they were not aware of the precision. So, uh, however, this argument is, and also speaking of, uh, of Ptolemy, uh, many sidereelists like to, uh, to say that if, if it were not for Ptolemy, uh, first of all, they criticized Ptolemy. I agree absolutely. Ptolemy uh, did, uh, uh, aside from the tropical zodiac, he tried to reform astrology and reformed astrology uh, in a very uh, way, in a way that was very detrimental uh, to ancient astrology because he uh, he threw away many, many hugely important concepts, and he practiced astrology without houses. He practiced, you know, uh, uh, the, the type of astrology. Some of some of the topics are really good that he that that he um, uh, quotes. I mean, he's quoting ancient sources, and but they're brief. But others are, you know, uh, you you can't analyze marriage without the seventh house. So it's it's uh, as he's doing. So anyhow, the point is is that the sidereelists are saying, you know, it's uh, Ptolemy's big influence as an astrologer, as a scientist. He was so big, he was such a luminary that he uh, he eclipsed others and they were, you know, they were, uh, how shall I put it, they were, um, uh, they were influenced, they were kind of, you know, uh, almost cowered into accepting this tropical zodiac because of this, uh, of, of his uh, uh, reputation and, and, and fame. Well, actually, if you look up, I mean, again, if you study the history of astrology, you will see that the Greek astronomer Hipparchus, of the second century uh, before before the common era, he was the one that discovered precession, and that that's at least the official uh, again uh, what we know, and that's the official again. You can look it up in many sources. So, and most importantly, as Chris Brennan also explains on page two hundred and eighteen, that Hipparchus uh, endorsed the tropical zodiac explicitly. So again, Hipparchus being uh, uh, three uh, hundred years before Ptolemy. In do, uh, being an astronomer, not an astrologer, endorses the tropical zodiac. Again, page 218 of Chris Brennan's book. Uh, moreover, he also says that 
James Holden notes that Hipparchus published solar and lunar tables that gave positions within the context of the tropical zodiac. Also, another source, because Chris Brennan is, is quoting uh, Evans, the history and practice uh, source, uh, some scientist Evans. Uh, so, uh, again, uh, this is uh, this is very important because the tropical zodiac was again it the problem is the problem is again we have to to keep always in mind the facts and the facts are that we don't very little has survived as, as again we have the first uh, the first few charts are from the first century before the common era and then uh, they start they start uh, appearing many many charts in the first century and especially in the second century we have hundreds of charts so uh, and also the matter of uh, of precession the ancients were not aware of precession not just the western astrologers where astrology originated but also the indian astrologers i will give us um, specific sources that show this uh, classical sources and uh, so and the zodiacs they coincided uh, again it, the deviations of two three uh, one two three degrees were so common uh, in the tables and uh, the zodiacs i mean were the difference between the zodiacs were was uh, two degrees three degrees so uh, at, at most so we don't uh, we cannot solve this uh, the issue of the sidereal uh, and tropical zodiac uh, by historical sources we cannot because of what i explained and uh, uh, there there are other much more powerful arguments that i will but i want to uh, to keep uh, giving one at a time uh, so it's uh, it's us it's up to us modern people to, to solve this is also robert Hunt also concludes and uh, so um Again, uh, quoting ancient sources is not enough by itself, as I will explain, not just explain that I will... Uh, we have significant problems with uh, with the sidereal zodiac if we want to practice this in modern times, if we want to practice ancient astrology, as, as I will show. Uh, now, in terms of... Uh, uh, in terms of, of the tropical zodiac, uh, again, uh, uh, some... Uh, Again, from Chris Brennan, some uh, some astrologers say that uh, the tropical issues that if if it's based on the seasons, then you run into an issue since the seasons are flipped in the northern and southern hemispheres. Now, this uh, is true if we're talking about physical reality. Again, folks, astrology comes from the spiritual world, from the higher spheres. It does not have to match physical reality uh, 100%. Not at all, as I will show. So uh, this uh, this notion uh, was actually uh, because again I, I practice ancient and Chinese astrology in uh, Chinese metaphysics when uh, because there are many uh, consultants in uh, that live in uh, the southern hemisphere I mean in Australia uh, etc and when they when they're asked to measure with a compass when they're asked to draw to draw uh, the, the Chinese horoscope uh, people are, are asking them well, aren't you going to flip you know things no the chinese metaphysicians and astrologers are adamant about this again what we are studying is not what we are applying are spiritual laws that filter down to the physical we don't have to conform to the physical uh so and as here is chris uh, and not just chris i mean there's other sources of astrologers in the southern hemisphere that say that there is no um there's no need uh, to flip charts and i can confirm this from my sp professional practice i have examined uh, for example the chart of uh, very famous football player leonel messi he was born in argentina in the southern hemisphere absolutely uh, gemini ascendant absolutely gemini ascendant physiognomy uh, wise etc uh, the meanings of the uh, the way the houses are the, the placement of the planets etc he had uh, significant financial problems with mars in the second house uh, etc fallen mars etc etc and um um i've also rectified charts of clients board in the southern hemisphere there's no need to flip anything uh so this uh, this argument again it, it's it's based on um for the sidereal issues uh, uh about the iron anxious, yes uh but i would not call this a, such a significant problem although in some charts it's very it's very significant because uh you can have a different sidereal ascendant depending on the iron amsha and this is you know uh in such cases it's a significant problem but other than that uh it's not uh it's not uh, as significant as i will show for, for, for other matters uh again this th this is more significant again whether the, the idealist zoidia images should be used or the actual constellations 
Again, if you're claiming that the sky is the ultimate arbiter of truth on physical reality, then why are you using idealized versions of the constellations? Uh, so uh, uh, these are these are uh, these are very valid questions, and we should uh, we should address them in our uh, discussion of, uh, of, of 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 this issue of, of the zodiac of the sidereal and the tropical. Uh, next, uh, let's see. Um, well, let's let's get into the hi let's get into the historical part. Uh, well, we said that uh, the Sidereal zodiac was the first zodiac, as history shows. Uh, we don't have proof otherwise, so th these are facts. And, uh, however, uh, what, what you probably don't know is that while the sidereal zodiac was used in ancient times, it is again uh, 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 Chris Brennan's book quoting uh, scientists, uh, the very famous Alexander Jones that has written um, many uh, topics on the subject that has studied the ancient charts that has, uh, I mean, uh, Speaking of ancient charts, actually, let me show you. This is a uh, this is a very uh, uh, this is a very good book by. Uh, you won't learn astrology from it, but you will. I mean, it's uh, it's a scientific book uh, written in 1959, was it? Yes, by these scientists, very famous, Nogi Bauer and Van Huysen, and they uh, they went and it's digitalized by Google. So uh, and um, they went and. Uh, uh, and dug up all the ancient charts that they could find and they started dating them and these people did tremendous uh, tremendous work because again this was uh, prior to the age of computers they had to date them you know by hand and they uh, you know etc etc and they uh, uh, they helped a lot uh, they helped a lot in this respect here is the content you can I will again again we will link in the description and uh, uh, so uh, they show that again, and with what with Alexander with Alexander uh, Jones also uh, confirming that uh, the Hellenistic astrologers of the few, of the first few centuries of the Common Era largely continued to use all the calculations for determining planetary placement that resulted in sidereal positions. Sometimes using algorithms derived from Mesopotamian sources. Again, Chris Brennan's book, page 218, uh, quoting Alexand uh, Alexander Jones in Ancient Rejection and Adoption of Ptolemy's Frame of Reference for Longitudes, and is Holden the Classical Zodiac. Uh, John Jones points out that these astrologers may not necessarily have conceptualized this frame of reference as primarily sidereal and that the phenomenon of precession seems to have been either largely unknown or in some instances rejected as a theory for several centuries. Again, this scientist. Uh, Jones, Ancient Rejection, page 29. Again, page 218 in Brennan. So, uh, so for the first few centuries we have uh, this uh, the sidereal zodiac being used, but again the zodiacs coinciding uh, with differences of two to three degrees at most, and with big deviations in tables, as I will as I will uh, explain. And as also uh, Alexander Jones says, uh, Jones notes that Valens does not, which is Valens second century astrologer, does not appear to have been aware of precession, and says that while the placements he uses are effectively sidereal. By assigning fixed longitudes to the equinoxes and solstices, this essentially makes it so that according to the in internal logic of the system, the frame of reference is tropical. Thus, there may be a disconnect or at least some ambiguity between the intent and the practice of the astrologers when it comes to the use of the sidereal or tropical zodiac in the Hellenistic tradition, and this should be taken into account in future discussions about this topic. Again, in as, uh, uh, as also as Chris Brennan continues, uh, after 350 AD, this resulted. Uh, so the, the, most of the surviving uh, of the horoscopes were sidereal until 350 AD. Then there was a shift, and Ptolemy's tropical values and tables became more widely adopted. This resulted in the tropical zodiac becoming the dominant reference system in the West during the late Hellenistic tradition, and then into the medieval period, all the way through modern times. Although 
they were astrologers as I will uh, explain that uh, uh, that continued to use the sidereal zodiac in certain parts but they were uh, uh, by and large uh, a, a, a small uh, minority uh, now I would like to also uh, something I um, uh, I was going to examine was that uh, uh, the meanings uh, so, so the speaking of uh, uh, you know let's 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 finish with uh, let's finish here with the comments because there are some uh, for example uh, uh, that uh, he, Mark Callan again this British astrologer says that uh, uh, on the point of Hipparchus being the discoverer of precision it's worth pointing out more and more academics seem now to accept that Hipparchus got his information from Babylonian astronomer and mathematician Kidinu thus several scholars now suggest Kidinu may be the actual discoverer of this phenomenon not, not, not Hipparchus I don't know uh, when this Kidinu lived, but if he lived centuries earlier than Hipparchus, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, would not, uh, from a certain perspective, this would not bode well for uh, Babylonian astrology because they knew of precession and yet they couldn't uh, without without um, without without uh, Hipsico in the in the second century as Hipparchus they couldn't uh, calculate charts they couldn't calculate natal charts natal astrology did not exist although they had benefic and malefic planets they had uh, uh, what else I mean they had again very primitive uh, type of astrology and they could not so with, with knowing precession and possibly hence the, Swiss, the tropical zodiac they did not take advantage of this which uh, suggests again which kind of uh, uh, kind of validates uh, for example Robert Schmidt's uh, position that again Hellenistic astrology marked an entirely new beginning in the history of, of ancient astrology because it was the first horoscopic astrology and it appeared he, well I disagree with his argument that it was a sudden invention or that he did not uh, take advantage of, of, of other uh, discoveries such as the zodiac uh, etc the 5th century BCE uh, another point here is that uh, this you should know this is that uh, this is this is this are seasonal consideration of, about the sun that uh, uh, I'm not gonna again this the, this uh, argument about the physical realities uh, it's really weak when when we know where astrology is coming from when we know the hermetic principle of as above so below etc etc there is another there are just uh, there is a very useful article that I will uh, I will link uh, uh, here that uh, uh, that if Hipparchus did not discover precession that who discovered it and as Mark Cullen again says that he has read a lot on the subject and that uh, there is this claim that uh, Babylonians first discovered precession however Otto Neugebauer was the most prominent researcher who sought to refute the theory uh, Roman Kolev, Bulgarian astrologer, astronomer, translator, etc., linguist has um, pub has published works on on this on this uh, issue that I recommend any astrologer to read. Uh, there was this uh, big uh, conspiracy, really a big plot uh, by um, uh, by uh, by Jesuits, by the Vatican, by uh, uh, to suppress uh, the long, long history of Babylonian uh, science and especially Babylonian astronomy and astrology. Again, not talking about NATO, but doesn't matter. And they, uh, again, Roman Kolev published a book that proves that mathematically, astronomically, that um, certain configurations can be dated to, f uh, to uh, 5,500 before the Common Era. Uh, and this book no one has been able to refute and they will not be able to because of uh, but this book flips and you know destroys the whole uh, theory and you know of Assyrio of Assyriology Assyrian uh, science etc but anyhow the point is is that there may be something to it because Neugi Bauer tried to refute it possibly trying to hide something but anyhow this does not help us with the sidereal and tropical zodiac but it, it, it's an important point of, uh, of information that you may you may have not been aware of uh, so much for this uh, now for the uh, for the uh, another another issue that I was going to, to examine was for the uh, uh, some uh, sidereal astrologers uh, say that uh, the meanings of the zodiacal signs, of the images of the Zuidia, as we call them here in Bulgaria and in Greece, come from the constellations. Well, that's not true. 
that's not true at all and in fact uh, again speaking of the constellations we had uh, it's a known fact that we had more constellations uh, and that prior to the 5th century when the zodiac became standardized uh, you know the, we have this uh, that the Libra is called the scales because of the scales of the scorpion etc etc and some ancient authors kept calling Libra uh, the scales uh, uh, the, the, the scales of the the claws sorry the uh, Libra the scales they kept calling it the claws and uh, so we have this this mixture but uh, in terms of the meanings of the specific meanings well first of all let's let me be clear that ancient astrologers were um, were uh, very weak uh, very sparse in their delineations in terms of uh, the meanings of the zodiacal signs images uh, and uh, in, moreover uh, in some of their delineations uh, we cannot apply they're not applicable to humans if you if you read for example valence you will see that uh, he i mean he's talking about thunder about hail about uh, i think about some rivers about some you know some uh, uh, rain or some some things like that. I mean, this is these are uh, again these are mundane considerations. So he's obviously quoting some other source, but we can't apply this to nativities, not just to nativities. So uh, or when he 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 is mixing things, when he's saying he he's giving the significations of, for example, of Taurus, and he says it has stars that that cause uh, injury to the eyes. This he is mixing zodiacs, but specifically about the meanings where they are derived. Well. Uh, you have to understand that prior to the uh, to the invention of, of again of Hellenistic astrology, prior to the invention of the houses, the rulerships, you will not find again you will not find delineations of of, 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 what, of, of what the twelve signs mean. You will uh, it's in terms of people again in terms of natal astrology. Not talking about psychology, I'm talking about character traits, not psychology here, very important. So you will not find this. You will uh, uh, also, uh, the way Valence uh, uh, delineates the 12, the 12 signs, as when, when, when I speak about signs, I mean the ascendant, I don't mean the sun sign, I don't mean uh, in ancient times the ascendant and the moon sign were the most important, not the sun, but it's the ascendant, okay, or possibly even the lot of fortune. Uh, but let's keep to the ascendant for now and uh, so when Valens says is that for example we uh, we delineate uh, the meaning of a given ascendant based on how the lord of this ascendant is placed whether it's of the sect whether it, it, it is in its own dignities whether it's aspected by malefics malefics etc again this is uh, 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 some older form a some a slightly different form of astrology because later again you don't have this in the persian or the european tradition or, or in the past few centuries so uh, again we have we have this um, uh, this uh, this older and differing tradition somewhat uh, in terms of specific delineations of the 12 signs well uh, you will see, for example, uh, first of all, let's start with uh, with Western, with ancient astrologers. You will see uh, delineations like those that have uh, a liberal ascendant uh, will possibly cause their own death. Those that have Virgo ascendant will uh, will see the death of, of their brothers. And, and delineations like this. Now, wh where is this coming from? Well, it's obviously coming from the houses and the rulerships. Again, concepts which did not, did not exist when only the sidereal zodiac existed by itself. These concepts appeared later as with the invention of the houses. So with, in the first case with liberal ascendant, we have liberal ruling goals, uh, sorry, liberal being ruled by Venus and ruling the eight Taurus. So the Lord of the first is also Lord eight. With, uh, here it is with, uh, with, uh, with Virgo. We have uh, the Lord of the. Uh, we have with Virgo. We have Mars ruling the third of siblings and the eighth of death. Uh, uh, many many other cases. And also, however, because some 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 could say, well, this is you know this is a tropical consideration. It's not necessarily tropical, but it's not. It does not derive from the cons from the constellations for sure, obviously. And let me give you also the there is this very famous uh, um, uh, American astrologer. Uh, uh, a practitioner of Giotish, uh, Har de Faux, he has uh, uh, an, uh, an excellent book called Light on Life. And in this book, he I, I should say he uses the sidereal zodiac, not the tropical. And uh, 
For example, when you read how he deline delineates the two of ascendants, again the two of signs, he uh, he is doing something similar. For example, with uh, with Aries ascendant, he will say, uh, let's see, can I show him? He, here is an Aries ascendant. He will say, uh, he will say, because uh, because uh, the sun rules the fifth house again the, the ascendant the, the fifth house the sun rules the fifth house and the sun is a friend of mars uh Aries people will be uh, will be very interested in having children however because the sun is a hot and dry planet it's a malefic in ancient in indian astrology and it denies children also in ancient astrology uh the native uh, will have fewer children or they could possibly even see the death of children uh, delineations of this sort and also because mars is exalted in capricorn which is the 10th house relative to aries uh, Aries ascendant people will be, you know, they will be uh, uh, very interested in uh, in gaming, in gaining fame, in gaining recognition, in being before the public, etc., etc. You know, again, these meanings have nothing to do with uh, with the constellations. It doesn't matter that he's using a sidereal zodiac. That's not the point. Because you could apply this with the tropical and many astrologers are. That's not the point. The point is, is that this argument that the meanings of the constellation of the signs come from the constellations is 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 not is not true. And um, further further uh, further proof for this is uh, that uh, the modalities the modalities of the twelve signs are clearly tropical. I mean, based on the tropical zodiac, we have the movable four angles here that we have the movable which again initiate they move because the sun moves uh, it changes um, uh, direction on, on, on the equator and we have uh, we have the fixed again where the temperature where the where they, that they are stable and then we have the double bodied or the mutable where where it vacillates it alternates between being uh, one and the other or it happens twice or you have to start over Again, these are obviously uh, tropical considerations. So, uh, and this fact is also missed by sidereallists, seeing that just because when these uh, concepts were being developed and the, the zodiacs coincided, does not necessarily mean that they remain valid in the sidereal zodiac. Very important point that's not uh, being discussed. On the other hand, for the tropical zodiac, we have to use precession for certain types of signs. Such as Ptolemy explicitly says that when we're dealing with constellational images and such as the nature of some signs like like be they uh, uh, being uh, uh, humane or being uh, 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 being uh, he gives many types of uh, uh, he gives many types of, uh, of signs we have to take into account uh, precision because we're dealing with, with with figures in the constellations so uh, again we have this uh, uh, it's not 100% tropical or sidereal. In certain cases, we have to take into account both uh, both perspectives. Uh, so, uh, also obviously with the stars or with the nakshatras, precision must be used. It's a uh, it's a given. Um, uh, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, what's my next? Uh, uh, Yes, so let's uh, let me show you uh, about the zodiacs. Now, first, depending on what type of uh, ayanamsha, what type of sidereal zodiac you're using, uh, the zodiacs will have coincided uh, in a given year. So, with again with the so-called Babylonian fixed zodiac Aldebaran 15 Taurus, you see here that. It was in June or around June 220 AD. Let me uh, let me zoom that. You see 220, and there is the chart. There, there are the two charts again, identical charts with uh, exact same. There is a minute here, but it, it, it's seconds. It's not uh, the exact same. I calculated it. I uh, yes. So this is again the year 220. In other words. 70 years after Ptolemy or after Valence or even less or around 70 years so one degree again this is according to the Aldebaran 15 that is the primary one in the western tradition uh, now when we look at the Indian uh, Ayanamsha the, the leading one Lahiri it was again I calculated it for Alexandria Egypt 200 
8580 so 65 years later because it's again it's uh, there is a difference of almost one degree between uh, Lahiri and Aldebaran uh, Lahiri is one degree later again this is uh, as you see this is the tropical this is the sidereal and the charts are identical uh, I mean the same and uh, so this uh, this is important to know because and also uh, in another way this is Roman Coles program for Philip Magus 2 uh, you will show here you will see here that first of all I, I put the year 150 for Valence and for Ptolemy etc around and you will see here that this is the vernal point this is the vernal equinox and I'm using again he all, only allows uh, tropical or fixed Babylonian no other this 50, 15 Aries is not anyhow so using the Babylonian I am sure the vernal point was at 058 Aries so in other words in, again this seen in another way we have this about one degree difference which means that on a historical basis you cannot use this to say Jasons use this or that that's just one part of the problem uh, let's uh, uh, let's get into the other big part of the problem uh, now Vitius Valens, the most prolific ancient astrologer that uh, that uh, has saved over 120 charts in his anthology. I've studied them in detail more than once, more than twice, and I have them here in my program Delphic Oracle about ancient astrology. I have them all of them. I mean, from up, up to book seven. After that, there are just a few charts. But the point is, I went to the trouble of examining all the charts, and I have. Uh, and I have extracted those charts that have such big deviations that it's, uh, you know, let's 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 quickly go over them. Again, this is uh, uh, Valence Book Two, page uh, thirty-four. Jupiter in Capricorn, Mars and Saturn in Cancer. Jupiter in Capricorn, impossible. Jupiter is in Virgo. Uh, Saturn in Cancer. Look, Saturn is at the end of... Uh, again, I should say that this is... I I'm using the tropical zodiac. You, the way you can see with Delphic Oracle is because the, 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 the ascensional times, the rising times of the signs are the same. Whereas in the sidereal, they're different. So again, allowing... This is year 95, allowing about 2 degrees for precession forward because the vernal point was about 2, uh, two Aries and retrograding back. So 2, this will come to almost 0 uh, Virgo. And he's saying that saturn is in cancer man talk about deviation jupiter in capricorn also impossible uh, mars mars in cancer yes absolutely adding two degrees it comes into cancer that's fine uh next uh well for those that are wondering these pages are uh, based on robert schmidt's translation uh, but again, if we, I will show you uh, translations of valence of Mark Riley that are free, but you don't have the charts and you don't have the dating. Uh, although actually you have the dating. Recently there was a, I will I will show it later. So again, Mercury in Taurus, Mercury at 16 Aries. I mean, uh, 17 call it 17 Aries. Such a huge deviation. Uh, Saturn in Aries. Yes, year 83 when we are two degrees. Yes. Less than one degree uh, deviation, absolutely acceptable. That's that's fine. Again, so again with the sidereal zodiac, we, we have to add because it's prior to the year 2020 or 20 to 285. So we are adding forward. Uh, next, Mars in Cancer. Well, no. Again, even if you add two degrees or even less, depending whether you're using Aldebaran or something else, it will come to 27, 30, 28 at most. Again, two degree difference, and the zodiacs being there being two difference, uh, two degree difference between the zodiacs. You see, it's, uh, it's <laughs> uh, moving on. Venus in Sagittarius, Mars in Leo. Venus is in Libra. Mars is in Libra. Again, Mars. They're not in Leo, so huge, huge uh, discrepancy. Next, Mercury in Gemini. Mercury is at 26 Taurus almost. Again, when we add 2 degrees or even less, again, depending on the Ayanamsha, it will come to about 28. Again, 2 degree difference and 2 degree Ayanamsha. You know, it's... Uh, <laughs> uh, next, uh, Mars in Capricorn. Mars is in the ninth house in Scorpio. I mean, where is Capricorn, where is Scorpio? Huge, huge. Uh, next, Mercury in Leo, Mars in Gemini. 
Mercury in, with the sidereal Mercury would come even for, more, more, uh, more forward. It would be seven, about six and something, uh, not in Leo. Mars in Gemini. Let's see, Mars is in <laughs> the fifth house in, uh, in Aquarius. I mean, uh, 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 next. Mars in Gemini, Saturn in Aquarius. Mars in Gemini, Mars in 10 degrees. Okay, we are two degrees for precession in the sidereal. We will have eight degree difference. I mean, that's, you know, uh, uh, Saturn in Aquarius, sure, sure, when we add two degrees, they will be less than one degree uh, to say zero Aquarius, fine, that no problem here, I mean, the deviation is acceptable. Uh, next, Saturn in Taurus, a lot of fortune in Leo, Saturn in Taurus, well, no, again, when we add two degrees, we'll have four degree difference, it's, uh, sorry, it's, it's, it's just too much, it's too much, a uh, lot of fortune in Leo, it's an impossibility because the ascendant will change and again not usable uh, next uh, mars in cancer a lot of spirit in scorpio mars in cancer acceptable when we add about a degree and a half again, again depending on the anamsha it will be about one degree deviation acceptable a lot of spirit in scorpio uh, now and here is the lot of spirit by the way i should say that this again this is the ancient hellenistic format although they also used round charts but such a type of format is uh, is preserved in rhetorias for example and others and this again i'm using delphi coracle we can use uh what i love about this software we can use uh, the round wheel these are the ascensional times we can use the hellenistic or we can use even the medieval and if we uh if we want to uh to use quadrant system to see the, uh, we can use it like this, uh, etc. Although here we have whole science as, as the original tradition. Uh, next, uh, so so for the for the this is the this is the lot of fortune, the lot of the moon, etc. It's with the glyph of the moon in a circle because it's the lunar lot, and this is the lot of spirit with the glyph of the sun and the circle, because it's the solar lot. It's the lot of the invisible. And uh, this is the lot of exaltation in Valence, and we have other lots also, such as the lot of buses. There is the lot of buses. Uh, okay, and uh, so the lot of spirit, it may it it may seem possible because you can fast forward the ascendant, let's say an hour later or something. But the the the, the problem is that Valence in the text he has given the lot of fortune being in Aquarius, and when we move forward, so this is an impossibility. Lot of spirit being it because fortune will get messed up it will change uh, next uh, mars in capricorn mars in capricorn mars is in aquarius again with the sidereal it you if you move about a degree and a half 14 it's in capricorn again uh, doesn't work in either zodiac uh, saturn in aries jupiter in pisces jupiter in pisces absolutely sidereally it is in pisces uh, Saturn in uh, Saturn in Aries. Well, no. Again, if you give a degree and a half or even two degrees, you have over two degrees difference. Again, again and again, you see we have uh, the precession is about two degrees and the deviations, or even um, more often than not, are more than two degrees. So uh, next, Mercury in Gemini, Saturn in Gemini. Uh, Mercury in Gemini, well, Mercury is in Cancer tropically, sidereally, it will be even further in Cancer, it will be about two Cancer, it's given in Gemini. Wrong. Saturn in, in, uh, in Gemini, again, Saturn is in the 8th house to move into the 9th in Gemini. Again, adding two degrees for precession will come to, there will be about three degree difference. Again, it's uh, not true in either. Uh, next, uh, uh, by the way, again, some uh, that Valence used eight Aries as, uh, as the tropics, uh, as, the, as the start, fine, but again, his charts are not suggesting there is not an eight degree because some of the charts are accurate. So this, this claim is not entirely, I mean, it's, uh, uh, it doesn't help us with, even if, even if he used that, again, it's not uh, with uh, examining the actual charts is given, as calculated. So this next uh, Venus in uh, Venus in Capricorn, Mars in Leo, and for the for the record, as you see, some charts have deviations more than eight degrees. It's it, it's a matter of in, in, inaccurate ephemeris. Uh, next uh, Venus in Capricorn, Mars in Leo, Venus in Capricorn. <laughs> Again, 
when sidereal you will move about two degrees it will come to 15 it should be should be in capricorn mars in leo sidereal again you will move about two degrees it will come to two and a half or three whereas it should be in leo even again neither true incorrect either in uh, tropical or even less so in sidereal uh, next uh, saturn in gemini venus in aries saturn in gemini absolutely sidereal it's even in, in, in gemini venus in aries Oh, again, it's a 10 Taurus. Uh, I mean, when sidereal, you, when you add two degrees, it will come to 12 Taurus. It's in it's in Aries. Again, uh, not working. Uh, next, uh, Saturn in Pisces. Saturn is a 24 Aquarius. Uh, the year is 110. Well, no, when you add about two degrees, again, you will have more than three degrees deviation. Again, it's uh, the, the, the the, I announced the difference between the zodiacs is less than, than these deviations as you than, than these deviations as you see. Uh, next, uh, Mercury in Scorpio, Moon in Sagittarius, with degrees I've written. In other words, the degrees here are given. So Mercury in Scorpio, <laughs> again, big big difference. A Moon in Sagittarius, Moon is in Aquarius, the fifth house. So uh, again. Uh, uh, and again, these are degrees given here in the in the text. Again, book uh, book three, page fifty-seven in, in Schmidt. But again, I will show uh, next. Uh, again, this is an example of the length of life in violence, book three. Uh, moon in Aries. Possibly, again, there will be some slight deviation. Fine, fine, acceptable. But the notes, the notes he gives them in, at the sixteen degree of Taurus and Scorpio, so four degrees forward. Next, uh, Sun in Taurus, Moon in Notes, plus 5 degrees as well. Sun in Taurus, and if you move it 5 degrees, Moon, it was at 15, 16 de 16th degree of um, Gemini, so 5 degrees forward, and the Notes 5 degrees forward. Uh, next, Venus in Cancer. <laughs> Venus is a 29 Leo, so ideally when you move it 2 degrees it will come to Virgo and Venus is given in Cancer and I and notice that here the lot of exaltation is given in Cancer and it is in Cancer so again it's not a matter of the lot of I, I also the lot of spirit is possibly given but the lot of, the lot of exaltation for sure uh, next uh, Mercury in Libra So ideally, when you move it about two degrees or degree and a half, it will come further in Scorpio. Tropically, it's also in Scorpio, but it's close. Again, uh, inaccuracies in, uh, in tables. Uh, next, Jupiter in Aquarius. It's too much. It's about two degrees precession to, for the uh, uh, for the anemshas to, to I mean for the, the zodiacs to match, and then you have two degrees deviation. So two degrees, two degrees, two degrees, two degrees. Uh, next, Saturn in Aries, same thing, Sidereal it will come forward, but it will not be in Aries, it will be at about 28 in something uh, Pisces, 2 degrees, 2 degrees. Next, Venus in Pisces, yes, well, again, drop, uh, Sidereal it will come, notice it's in 153 year, so 1 degree to, to for, uh, for Deborah 15 to come to one Pisces, one and one and 115 Aries, and tropically it remains here. So close, but again, inaccurate tables. Uh, next, uh, Saturn in uh, Sun in Libra, Mars are the star of Aries in Virgo. Sun in Libra, yes, sidereally, again, it, it would be in Libra. Uh, Mars, however, the star of Mars in Virgo, out of the question. Uh, big, big deviation here. Okay, we have a few more charts left. Aphrodite in Scorpio, so the star of Venus in Scorpio. Look, 24 Libra in the 11th house. Again, year 122, when we add about two degrees or even less, it comes to 26, about 26, four degree difference, or three and a half degree difference. It's, it's, ju it's just too damn much. Uh, next, uh, Mars in Virgo, Saturn in Aquarius. Uh, Mars in Virgo again sidereally it will come forward about a degree and a half so it will come to two and two and a half 
liberal or tropically it's closer to Virgo but again inaccurate tables uh, Saturn in Aquarius sure sidereal it's actually even sidereal it's in Aquarius uh, next Jupiter in Virgo Jupiter is in Capricorn in the, the eighth house it's impossible I've written here in brackets because again the other planets are as given by Valens but Jupiter in Virgo it's it's an impossibility uh, next uh, Venus in Capricorn Saturn in Leo Venus in Capricorn <laughs> 21 Aquarius again with Sidereal it will come to 23 Aquarius but regardless of Zodiac it's such a huge deviation that uh, Saturn in Leo sure absolutely uh, Sidereal it's even in zero Leo uh, and the last one uh, Saturn in Aries uh, again one uh, slightly over one degree because 20, 20, 220 is for the formal Deboran it will again there is there will be three th three degrees and a half deviation whereas with Lahiri it will be uh, less it will be two degrees and a half almost so again it, it, it's too much it's too much so I've showed you what how many 30 charts I've showed you 30 charts uh, again and I'm not there there are others and others again I have them all but I'm not I'm not gonna bother with some small small deviations I've showed you as, as you've seen significant significant deviations so we can't even based on this argument alone you can't be saying they were using this or that because with such uh, with such inaccurate ephemeris I mean what are we talking about so uh, okay folks let's uh, let me examine the biggest problem for the sidereal zodiac and that problem is again I recommend it I will give a link in the description for the uh, for the rising times for the ascensional times now again I'm uh, uh, I have the tables etc but I will show you software uh, what I'm uh, what I'm uh, what I'm uh, suggest what I'm showing here is that First of all, let me explain that uh, people, uh, you know, with sidereal zodiac, people would say, you know, this is the uh, this is the fixed zodiac, this is the perfect zodiac, uh, you know, it doesn't change, you know, etc. Well, again, as I said a few times, it depends on the perspective. And again, I'm a professional astrologer specializing in ancient and Chinese astrology. And ancient astrology, Valence is extremely close to my heart. I've written. Uh, many times that without valence there can be no ancient astrology you can practice uh, 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 personal Arabic astrology you can practice uh, medieval astrology with European or Renaissance astrology but without valence some of the most cryptic and some of the most uh, uh, revealing techniques uh, you will not be taking advantage of because um, so the point is uh, how many astrologers First of all, how many astrologers are being taught, you know, because I, they're, they're starting and they're saying, I would like to study and they're meeting some astrologers, some, some of their friends are astrologers and they're asking, you know, what should, should I, should I try the, the tropical or should, should I dip into the, uh, should I dip into the tropical or the sidereal? And they're not certain and they say, you know, again, depending on their background, etc., etc., their training, again, they will say, you know, let's say they start, start with the sidereal. I mean, it's fixed, it's, you know, it's not a problem, right? I mean, I can take Valence and I can apply what Valence was using nowadays. I mean, uh, the techniques, I mean, you obviously have to adapt them somewhat, but the, the, the essence is, is eternally valid. So you, you test them, you, you do the necessary research and you start incorporating them uh, little by little in your practice. However, what actually turns out is that you can't do that. Yes, folks, you can't do that and let me show you, at least for, for the for, for significant number of them. Now, first of all, uh, this is the chart of Rusi, my, uh, my, uh, my city of birth, Rusi in Bulgaria, very ancient country, very ancient calendar, uh, etc. It was created in the first century of the common era it, uh, by, by the Romans. So I've calculated the chart as you see here, let me enlarge. Let me zoom uh, for the year 150. Again, Valens, Ptolemy, etc. So this is again Russia, Bulgaria, as you see the coordinates, tropical, whole sign, etc. It doesn't matter the, 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 the house system. And these are again in Delphic Oracle, these are the ascensional times. The, the time it takes for a given sign to ascend. 
and here is Ruse again in 2022 again with the tropical zodiac look at the ascensional times now look let me enlarge here 150 AD and here is 2022 almost 100 1872 uh, years take a look there is some slight slight deviation but they remain fixed they i mean they remain coupled sorry i mean they remain coupled the rising times they have their they're in uh, they're like twin couples you know libra and virgo Leo and scorpio these are the these are the so-called what we call uh, uh contra antitions or opposition by antition all right they remain and again those that that use the the sidereal zodiac again they will think that because you know it, it's fixed it doesn't change you know etc etc but actually look folks look again let me zoom take a look a year 150 with aldebaran it doesn't matter whether it's aldebaran or here again uh year 150 and year 2022 again ruse uh aldebaran take a look folks take a look when violence was using or when violence was practicing when the others were practicing and po and using the sidereal zodiac they were using this this is how the rising times were they were the same very very slight differences and in, in fact actually uh, uh the point of the matter is that they did not use this they did not use astronomical reality because they did not know about precision and they did not they used System A, the Alexandrian type of, of as Robert Hanek Smith, not just Robert Hanek, Robert Schmidt, etc., and others, the Alexandrian type of rising times, which were the same, which were which were this, which were fixed, you know. And I should say that this, the rising times, they uh, they change depending on latitude. So, uh, whereas now, if you want to apply valence in 2022 or in, in any other century later, I mean, when you, when, when you have several, several centuries pass or even more, take a look what happens, especially when it's more. Take a look, folks. How are you going to use Aries, planets in Aries and planets in Pisces being rising together, being activated together? You can't. How are you going to use Taurus and, and, uh, and Aquarius? You cannot. Gemini and Capricorn. Take a look. Take a look. It's uh, it's how it was in the past. And again, they even used the fixed ones. They used, the, again, the uh, the fixed ones. The exact same ones. As, again, Valence Book 7 and not just Book 7. Whereas now, look, folks. Well, okay, you can use, you can use for... <laughs> But you can't use just one. I mean, Libra, <laughs> Libra and, uh, and and uh, and Virgo. So uh, this is uh, such a heavy, heavy blow to the sidereal zodiac that uh, you know. Again, if uh, uh, and let me show uh, uh, Valence. Uh, if you are again, if you're serious about ancient astrology and if you want to study the earliest authors. I repeat, the earliest authors, you have to use the rising signs, the rising times. Because as Valens explains, Valens explicitly quotes Nichepso, Nichepso, you wanna, however you want to pronounce it, the king and Petuzir is the high, the high priest, but especially Nichepso. And again, uh, book 7, but not just book 7, my point is, is that without the, the ascensional times, Valens uses them for the length of life, uh, various techniques for the length of life not just one technique for the length of life but they they, they use the, the ascensional times he uses them for uh, for uh, many types of, uh, of of astrological events such as promotions uh, uh, imprisonment death of parents marriage divorce uh, you know uh, exile and many many other types now, of course, I'm not saying that this is the, the be all and end all of, of techniques. What I'm saying is, is that in Valence, Book Seven is the most cryptic book that, uh, if you if you read the the translation of the, the the introduction of Robert Schmidt, he says that it is with um, with some hesitation that he releases this book because of the oath that Valence extracts from his readers and the curses that are present not just in Book Seven. 
because this knowledge was secret, this knowledge was again uh, extremely difficult, extremely convoluted and, and cryptic and uh, you know it's so uh, also there is a method for um, for seeing when when certain planets will uh, uh, will start ruling the, the life of the native again according to, to their placement in the uh, uh, in the angles and their ascensional times or the ascensional times of their uh, of the of the science they rule or their lord or a combination of these etc etc you cannot use this with the sidereal zodiac again this is again so, which is why I keep saying, as Robert Hans keeps saying, and many other soldiers, it's a problem for modern times for us to solve. So, if you want to use Valence, uh, and if you insist on using the Sidereal Zodiac, well, my friend, you can have, you, you can use perfections. Uh, you can use some other techniques, although you're gonna have to research them because. Uh, I'm not aware of that many astrologers in the world researching Valence and uh, I don't want to sound uh, but this it, it just it, it, it is reality you can you can prove me wrong show me show me astrologers that have published tutorials on Valence or that are teaching Valence but not just a given technique here and there I'm talking about in detail now Robert Schmidt was the first astrologer in the world possibly at least in the western world that published a tutorial on zodiacal releasing and he had many students, such as one of them being uh, uh, American astrologer and author Chris Brennan and others. And they, they tested they tested the method thoroughly in the sidereal and in the tropical. And their conclusion, unanimous conclusion, is that zodiacal releasing, one of the most powerful methods of ancient astrology, does not work well enough with the sidereal, whereas it works excellently with the tropical. And that's not just their own uh, 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 conclusion. Um, in fact, if you are uh, uh, if you are aware of Chris Brennan, Brennan's work, you will know that uh, he uses only uh, uh, Hellenistic astrology, and he uh, he pretty much he pretty much uh, specializes in uh, zodiacal releasing and perfections. So he is one of the people in the world that has most studied, especially zodiacal. And not, but speaking of zodiacal releasing, because it's uh, again. Uh, uh, so uh, and my, my experience confirms the same. And let let me uh, uh, let me also show you that I am the second astrologer in the world after Robert Schmidt who has published a tutorial on Vitius Valens. Yes, Chris, uh, Chris Brennan has lectures on zodiacal releasing, but he was influenced by Robert Schmidt. He was not a pioneer in this respect. Whereas this text is. It took me years to decipher it and to test it and to discover and to uncover and to etc etc. And uh, this tutorial on being abroad in immigration is the only uh, uh, the only uh, Valence is the only author that treats this subject. And Valence Valence quotes some some older astrologers. And I've tested this and in my tutorial. I, I give 50 real uh, 50 horoscopes of real people and how this method is applied. And Valence uh, gives the method that Valence is, is giving is. Uh, is zodiacal releasing uh, so uh, again not not talking just theory again i'm into the practical part now so you should be checking astrologers that, that have uh, that have thoroughly tested things again uh, let me uh speaking of, uh, of of methods and techniques i want to be very clear that uh, I'm not saying that ancient astrology was tropical, nor am I saying that it is sidereal. Same for Indian astrology. What I'm saying is that certain methods, certain techniques, certain uh, uh, certain foundations, certain uh, theories, if you will, they are better matched by a given zodiac and not the other. And I will also share with with Indian astrology uh, another uh, another method that's uh, also uh, very uh, uh, used by Valence and uh, sorry and exemplified is called decennials. Uh, this is a method that's also survived in uh, 5th century astrologer Hephaestio of Tips and that he gives uh, long delineations of about this system. And with uh, with decennials, it's like uh, it's like the the Indian Dasha system. We have two levels: the first one and the second one, and we also have the third and the fourth one, for that matter. And that this method is uh, uh, this method is uh, so it's it's a rulers of the time techniques, uh, incorrectly called time lords. 
uh, that because we have many different time times in the life of the native as the ancient astrologer said plural times and uh, this method this uh, predictive technique uh, allows you to write a biography of the native without uh, as, the, as the Indian astrologers practice for example so it's it's a, it's a very powerful method and if you uh, have you if you are aware of the Firdaria technique which is Persian in origin uh, of course we also have it here in, in the Ophic Oracle but Firdaria is fixed Firdaria it's you, all you have to do is is take a look whether we have a day chart or a night chart now the Sun is below the horizon again the eastern horizon so it's a night chart so we start with the moon automatically however with with the seniors, it's not as simple as that. Uh, the way I've played with the settings is to have a user selection so that I can select which planet starts because, uh, so it, uh, let's see, uh, uh, let's see. So uh, it's uh, so, so this is a very easy case. It's it's a night chart. The sun is below the horizon. So in a night chart, we start with the moon, like with the signals. However, if the moon falls amiss, if it falls in a bad place, then we'll start with the sun. Not only that, so you see, it's 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 more special, it's more customized to the nativity, but also the sequence of planets is based in the zodiacal order in the nativity after the first uh, planet ruling the times. Not and not as with Firdaria, that's again that's that's that, that's always fixed. So this technique is it's much more specialized and it's it's uh, hence it's more accurate, it's more powerful than uh, uh, than Firdaria, but it's not as easy to apply. You have to. There are many many cases where you ha when there when one of the planets is falling amiss and you're not sure whether this place can be used for example is that is the ninth place it's cadent which are we using are we using whole signs or or quadrant are we using uh, the system of of busy places conducive to business according to hermes or according to nehepso it makes a difference so it calls for a lot of research and then are we using the tropical or the sidereal zodiac I have tested this technique with hundreds and hundreds of charts over the years. I have written articles about it, etc. It is the tropical zodiac, not the sidereal. So you are of course always welcome to, to test it and to experiment and to prove it to, to prove it yourself. But again, this is my long experience. I've been studying Valence for uh, 11 years now and uh, not just violence so i've tested these techniques and again this uh, uh, but it's what i was saying is it's very important to uh, uh to keep in mind that ancient astrology in this respect it's a uh, uh it's a uh, it's a very rich system it's much richer than the indian system we have many more uh, i will make a separate video about many more uh, planet uh, techniques for for ruling times uh, planets that rule the times that uh, we don't have just dashes and transits uh, but the point is is bl we should not be making blank again blanket statements like this astrology is sidereal this astrology is tropical you are you are putting so many things into one package and saying and you know and and saying you know this is this this is that it doesn't work this way it doesn't work this way and again everything comes from the creator you want to call it the infinite ocean you want to call it god whatever you want to call it everything comes from the creator if the creator did not intend for for there to be three zodiacs or two zodiacs they would have been just one zodiac but he she it's not a male it's not a female intended it for us to have three zodiacs or two zodiacs likewise with chinese metaphysics if if again uh, because it's i'm um, mostly addressing this but what not not just to uh astrologers doing western astrology but because i um, specialize also in chinese astrology in china they don't use the planets however they have a problem with the with a problem like with the zodiac they have a problem with the calendars they have a solar calendar they have a lunar calendar and the types of uh, of, of heated discussions and quarrelings and attacks and uh, you know it's and smearing campaigns are very prevalent so again for some reason we are <laughs> we are having this we're having to deal with this we're not we're living in an imperfect world so we're having to deal with this uh, you know with this uh, with these matters uh, having said that uh, i was uh, in defense of the sidereal zodiac uh, while uh, the vast majority of astrologers uh, uh, adopted the tropical zodiac as scientist uh, alexander jones says after 350 after the fourth century uh, there were astrologers in the Persian tradition in the early Arabic Perso-Arabic tradition that stayed true to the sidereal zodiac. That's again that's a, that, that's a fact that you can you can look up their papers on this uh, on this issue etc. 
uh, however, and uh, also, however, uh, in the late 8th century to early 9th century, they also switched, the vast majority of them, they switched to the tropical system. And again, this is easily seen, for example, by Abu Mashar, the most famous Arabic astrologer. Again, their translations, I will always be praising and be grateful to, uh, to Benjamin Dykes and to, uh, uh, to Robert Zola, to many other uh, 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 translators and astrologers so we can uh, so we can we can read this uh, in english and in other languages i have also works in uh, uh have a, i have a book uh, uh, translated in bulgarian by an uh, by an arabic astrologer of the, of the ninth century uh, and he was using cosign houses and the uh, and the tropical zodiac and etc uh, etc et but uh, the point is 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 that uh, there was there was a uh, there was a group of astrologers or rather a region where i believe in um modern Tunis, northern Africa, that the, uh, after the eight, early, uh, late 8th, early 9th century, where they stayed true to the Sidereal Zodiac. And also, uh, uh, there is a branch in Indian astrology called Persian Arabic astrology, with the, which they uh, Sanskritize or transliterate as Tajika, again, because northern India was attacked by, uh, by Arabs, and they, uh, uh, they absorbed their, uh, their astrology. And uh, they, uh, again, I, I, don't, I know Indian astrologers, but I mean, India is such a huge country. But uh, to my knowledge, I don't know of astrologers in ancient times in, in India that used the tropical zodiac with, 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 the, with the Jika, with Persian Arabic astrology. What I, all the astrologers that I know and the sources indicate that they, they, they stayed true to the sidereal zodiac. Again, it's personal Arabic astrology, it's not violence, it's not using the rising times, it's not using zodiacal releasing or, de or decennials or, 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 or other of the above, but so they stayed true to the sidereal zodiac. So we have, they, they also have a very long tradition. So it's not, again, uh, we have to, uh, we have to, uh, you know, to, to, to admit this, to say it and to, 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 to obviously to respect it and to admire it. Uh, I have great admiration for, 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 for the Indian culture and, and, and astrology. And, uh, okay, let's see uh, what else. Uh, uh, here is, uh, here is a, a website where you can also uh, calculate the ascensions if you don't have such a software for uh, the ascensions of the ascensional times of the, of the Zoidia, of the images in the tropical or in the sidereal, and you can see for yourself, you can uh, pick the latitude, of course, this, this uh, I mean, we have astronomical considerations here and etc. But you can, you can see for yourself that there is this, uh, again, uh, you can't use this C with Aldebra. They're way too different. Now, now, at, now at times, it was not a, a problem in, uh, in ancient times. Uh, let's see how, where am I? Uh, okay, uh, next. Uh, uh, what I would like to, uh, uh, to do is... Uh, uh, so, le le let's, end, let's end with violence. I will give a, a quote. I will give a link in the description of this... Uh, uh, this amazing woman astrologer that that did this she published it recently uh, uh, she annotated uh, Vitya's Valens and not only that but she uh, uh, she added she added uh, uh, she added the uh, she, she added the uh, the charts she added the charts here so it's uh, because in the original there are, there are no charts she added the charts and also in the translation of mark riley she's using mark mark riley's free translation uh, uh american uh, author american uh, scientist and uh, uh, teacher etc so she added and also there is another uh this is using mark riley's translation by a macedonian astrologer and, my, and friend of mine Ilias passive he also annotated this uh, Mar mark riley but it has no uh, uh it has no chart here as, as, as with with mark riley's original translation but uh, the uh, the positive uh, the, the the positive thing here is that you can copy and whereas here with uh, the way she gave them uh gene she she used the glyphs and when you copy the glyphs in in, in word format it's you know they get messed up uh, anyhow uh, so this is again you can uh, again she, she's quoting also greek horoscopes very very uh, helpfully uh, th this dating that that i mentioned here in uh, uh, in the greek horoscopes uh, book by nogi baron van huizen uh, next 
uh, I would like to give you a very good source, a very good article to recommend to you. Uh, it really uh, uh, opened my eyes because uh, this is by uh, he's he's also saying that by, about that there there were more constellations that, uh, and later it, it became standardized uh, after Hipparchus etc. And that uh, so this is. Uh, an astrologer, American astrologer, er Ernst Wilhelm. He is a geodesian. He practices Indian astrology, and he initially practiced with sidereal zodiac. But as far as I know, he, as, uh, he knows Sanskrit and has translated some things in Sanskrit. And he he switched to the tropical zodiac, but using nakshatras in the sidereal. And this is a very long article, as you see, 25 pages. I highly, highly recommend it. I will link it in the description. He's he's quoting he's quoting ancient sources. He's quoting ancient sources and how there were mistakes in the in the Indian tradition. Now I'm not saying again. Uh, he's using a very scientific approach with again with sources. Uh, I should uh, let me give you another. Uh, let me give you another uh, source. Uh, this is uh, an, another American astrologer who also he also knows Sanskrit. Uh, Vic Dikara. He has published. He has translated works from Sanskrit. And he has a YouTube channel where he has videos about uh, reading in Sanskrit from the classics and applying and showing. Uh, extremely useful, extremely useful. I mean, I haven't had the time to, there are so many, uh, but uh, tremendous, tremendous. Uh, uh, and he's using also. Uh, He's using precession for the nakshatras, but he's using tropical for the planets and the, and the signs. Uh, let's see. Uh, there is another astrologer in. An, uh, he's Indian. Uh, you can again, again, I'll give the link in the description. He was practicing astrology for decades and decades, and he's practicing Jaimini astrology, which is one of the uh, the three branches of uh, Indian astrology. He's practicing it with tro the tropical zodiac. And this guy is PhD in chemistry. He was a, a, a teacher in universities, etc., etc. And he uh, he wrote an article in 2020, possibly predicting this uh, New York Stock Exchange cycle, 93-year cycle, that there would be that in 2022 or 2023 there would be a 2023. 2022, uh, there would be a, a, a great, uh, a great recession or great, uh, you know, uh, lots of bankruptcies in the markets, etc. Again, he's using uh, tropical. So uh, uh, now, having said this, let me uh, let me also uh, add that I know um, I have friends who practice, uh, who are professional astrologers, who are who know Sanskrit also, who are, have been to India, who have studied with Indians, or who are who have written books, etc. And uh, or have channels etc have long experience uh, they swear by the sidereal zodiac with Georgish and uh, what I can say is that I've seen the work of, of, of these people and uh, in my experience because I was uh, little by little uh, became uh, initially I had a very low opinion of Indian astrology because of the way it was presented uh, all the worshiping stuff, the lower astral stuff. You can't practice until you, uh, unless you, uh, unless you pray, unless you do mantras, unless you do this, unless you do this. Wait a second, folks. Wait a second. Uh, it's not the case. It's not the case. When you when you strip these things and when you when you when you open your mind and practice it, you can extract tremendous value. My point is is that uh, in my experience. And again, based on also on the experience of these people, certain techniques in the sidereal zodiac in Indian astrology do not work with the tropical zodiac. And I will I will I would give two specific techniques. One of them is the uh, the sounds coming from uh, uh, the Navamshas, the D9 chart, the 108 sounds that are used for uh, for naming people or for so this. Uh, this was also this is also being used for predicting markets for example when a given sound is being transited in the sky by uh, by a malefic or by a benefic but especially by money by a malefic it works with the sidereal zodiac I cannot deny that I will never deny this it what is truth is the truth uh, also another method for uh, determining the Dharma type the five Dharma types of ancient times uh, this method uh, I was I was I was checking with with the sidereal and with the tropical the same chart, 
and I again as per my, by my Robert Zoller he said that to practice a method you have to you have to practice it on 200 charts before you come to a conclusion I'm close to 100 charts and even with 100 charts it's clearly seen that the tropic it, this this method it's it does not work in the tropical it's not enough when you have 30 40 percent accurate it's not enough whereas with the sidereo it just matches it just matches it, it's not a hundred percent because there are exceptions to the rules it's not as easy as applying it one two three but it's clear that in the sidereo zodiac it, it works and not in the tropical so again this uh the author is teaching it this way i've i've uh, i've said this based on my experience not on what the author said or wrote and it just works in the uh, in the sidereal so i have uh, again tremendous respect for the tradition in fact i will make another video for uh, whether astrology is again is physical is based on the sky or is based on some other principle and i will also uh, um, share further insights into into, into this uh, issue uh, now as for sources of uh, of astrology and as predictive astrology etc uh let's see i would like to give you now this uh this book uh this astrology regulus astrology anonymous american astrology he's also a student of, of, uh, of robert zola like myself i've taken also zola's courses and this thick book is over 750 pages <laughs> as you see uh it's a rectification manual but the book has this guy has done more research than possibly any other astrologer in the west and he uh and again this book was written in 2007 and is and he has again for those that uh that he's using tropical astrology as per robert zoller he's using all the methods of of abumashar the distributions uh, you know the distributions of of of, of the uh, uh, of the life points, you know, uh, the Fridaria, the solar revolutions, the perfections, the the the, the, the Lord of the Orb, etc., etc. Uh, so uh, again, he has done um, an amazing. On his website, he has published hundreds of charts, and he has published his research for free, basically, except for the, I mean, except for the books. But he has given tables and and you know, and many many things, and uh, with delineations of charts etc strongly recommend look him up regulus astrology world class research in uh, medieval predictive astrology i believe uh, he says uh, next uh, there is another book uh, this book uh, by uh, by an indian predictive techniques uh, in varshapala which is what the indians call the annual chart again the cycle of the year you know not just the solar revolution but the perfection and they also add indian methods but when you when you get rid of the indian methods if you're not into indian astrology you can see i should say that this uh, this astrologer is using the sidereal zodiac he's an indian he's following this tradition he's using the sidereal zodiac so this uh, there is the book it's a, it's a uh, it's it's not a big book but unlike western astrologers or some other who use you know some sort of tricks like very large charts he's using very small charts and the font is not as the font yeah it's it's a regular font so uh, there is lots of information packed here and what's also interesting is that is that uh, this man this astrologer as you see he's a surgeon head of the department of surgery he see he's not just an astrologer and uh, uh, speaking of this why someone would say why are you looking into indian what because the Indians they preserved a lot of the tradition, and for all the serious and earnest students of the tradition, we should look what they what they did, regardless of zodiac. I mean, and for example, one uh, one insight that uh, that we can uh, that we can take and I and I've used and I've confirmed is uh, in uh, uh, there are several ways of uh, of uh, of identifying topics. Uh, in ancient astrology in terms of the the annual chart we have three ascendants we have the natal ascendant we have the perfected ascendant and we have the solar return ascendant now again imagine that someone is uh doesn't matter it's vanish chart uh, imagine if someone is uh so a little ascendant he's 20 he she is 28 years old fifth place here so the perfection falls in the fifth from the natal now let's say the solar return falls in the in the ninth. In other words, Aries is the solar return ascendant. 
so ninth house rises we have ninth house ninth house topics we have also fifth house possibly topics because of the perfected ascendant depending on whether it's empty or not now do we use the derived charts based on the based on the on the solar return or based on the perfection in other words if we are using uh, if we are using uh, if we are using it based on the perfection the solar return falls in the fifth of the perfection so we have further activation of fifth house topics or are we using it based on the uh, on the solar return in other words placing the perfection inside the solar revolution chart so again this book what the indians called perfection the, what we call the perfection they call the muta again they are doing their thing uh, indianizing it he, they have kept this and the correct thing to do is to place the perfection inside the solar return in other words the solar return the solar revolution is the ninth house and the perfection the perfected ascendant falls in the ninth relative to the solar return so we have further emphasis of ninth house matters because the perfected ascendant falls because sagittarius is the ninth from aries so again this is and there are other other insights and tricks and you know uh, that, that, that 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 are used uh, uh next uh, another so again the first this one uses the tropical this one uses the sedero it doesn't matter what matters this is not violence these are not the most ancient methods you can you can it's just not that you can of course experiment with violence but again the rising times you will see you can't use them but any, anyhow the third book uh is by a swedish academic and astrologer martin gunsten uh, uh this book was published in 2020 as you see uh now martin gunsten he uses uh, the sidereal zodiac also and what is interesting is that he's using first of all the uh, the Krishna Murchi Ayanamsha, not the Debaran 15. Very, very interesting. And that he is also using our Capitius houses and not whole sign houses. Uh, also uh, an interesting approach. And we also have to acknowledge that Abu Mashar actually endorsed uh, uh, quadrant houses than uh, whole sign houses. Uh, uh, next, uh, let's see. So uh, uh, do I have other sources? Again, this is tropical, sidereal, sidereal. Uh, there is also another astrologer that, uh, at least I, I heard about this year, because he published a book. He is from uh, Slovenia or Slovakia, I apologize. Uh, at the turning of the years, again, this turning of the years, is, look him up, I will give a link in the description. Uh, the turning of the years is, uh, again, the, the phrase for, for of the Arabic astrologers for all the methods. You have the uh, the distributions you have for uh, you have for Daria, you have uh, perfections, you have solar return, you have Lord of the Orb, etc. etc. And this astrologer, I, I've uh, have some, some I have downloaded some interviews from him. I'm very uh, very impressed. What I what I really like about astrologers when they discuss not just one type of astrology, where they have uh, um, a very widened understanding. For example, he I see here that he he obviously knows Indian astrology. I don't uh, again he has seven eight interviews. I haven't watched them uh, all of them, but he could have been to India or he, he could have studied with with Indian astrologers. And uh, for example, one of the things that impressed me that he says is that uh, Indian astrologers, the Nadi branch, uh, if you're aware of it, they use perfections as a predictive technique. Imagine, folks. I mean, that's that's totally i never heard this anywhere else so uh uh, uh rock kuritnik uh I, I purchased his book in, on kindle from amazon he he uses the tropical zodiac again he's been influenced by indian knowledge etc but uh again i don't know what, which which astrology of his is primary it doesn't matter the point is we have examples of either the tropical or the sidereal again it's worth examining it's worth you know seeing what what is how these astrologers are uh practicing the tradition and what i like about his book is that he has uh where is that you can uh he has uh specific again it's it's practical it's not theoretical enough with the theory let's see the charts so again uh uh, you can you can also there is a free version on i mean uh you can look up the, the the table of contents on amazon also just showing the table of contents so uh again it's 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 uh, it's worth checking out um let's see uh well last thing is my my my, <laughs> my hidden weapon as i like to call it 
uh, if after this uh, after this long lecture of mine I mean the long video if there are astrologers that are fanatical that are like for example here in Bulgaria we have some fanatics especially sidereists that you know that claim again divine uh, divine revelation Hermes etc the first astrologer you know it was sidereal it was this it was that you know the tropical zodiac is a is a departure of the tradition it's uh it's it's misleading and some i have even uh, uh, i have even read them uh, right that the tropical zodiac is a mistake how oh, can you imagine the hubris you know and the conceit that these astrologers have or should i call them pseudo pseudo astrologers now folks <laughs> my <laughs> my heavy weapon is james holden american astrologers translator uh, uh, researcher book biographical dictionary of western astrology astrologers this is the heaviest book that i have i have many many books not just astrological and this book take a look uh, uh, this book this comprehensive more than 220 western astrologers from ancient times beginning with the second century bc again second century because this this was when horoscopic ancient astrology was born down to the early 20th century etc etc history is made by people so biography is the basis of history in this book the reader will find the names and birth and death data very important of the most of most of the prominent western astrologers of the past and some indication what they did in the field of astrology it's that possible to learn how uh, uh, much about the history of astrology simply by reading the lengthier biographical entries however the main purpose of this book is to provide a ready reference and to give enough information about these astrologers to enable the reader to get to know them List of books written by the astrologers are included with it. In some cases, excerpts from their work. Invaluable, folks. And this was the crown jewel of uh, James Holden's career. He published it in 2012, as you see here. And he died the next year, aged uh, I believe 85 or something. So, if there are astrologers, if there are astrologers who keep claiming that the tropical zodiac is a mistake or the sidereal zodiac is a mistake or that one one zodiac is the the whole truth the truth and nothing but the truth uh uh i don't know call me write to me i can well if you're abroad it would be difficult but i can send you this book beat them on the head hit them on the head with this book <laughs> i'm serious hit them with the head and what's interesting is that this book i i weigh i weighed it on on, on the scales it's two kilograms so it's 2147 grams and i don't know whether it's uh, a coincidence or some uh, i doubt it's a coincidence but anyhow because we have 2200 astrologers more than to end and the book is weighs almost again over two kilograms or over 2100 grams and 2100 years ago around this time 2140 years ago uh Hipsico, published on the ascensions and ancient astrology was born astrologers started uh, being be, became uh, started i mean the, it was possible to calculate the houses the ascendant the 12 houses the degree of the ascendant etc etc so i find this very um, uh, <laughs> very intriguing and very uh, you know um, uh, synchronistic if you will so again remember this book and you use it on the heads of the fanatics <laughs> uh, i hope i hope this has been uh, uh, educational and instructional again it's it's not my uh, uh, it's not my uh, my goal and my intention to uh, to attack anyone or any zodiac as you've seen i've i've presented a rather uh, i mean as, as as impartial as i can do it even, even though again uh, when i practice ancient astrology i practice with the tropical when i practice georgish i practice with the sidereal uh, and again, uh, if uh, if you uh, if you have uh, if you'd like to present some other sources or some counter arguments, I'd be happy to hear them. If you have some questions or comments, uh, I'd be interested in hearing them and, and replying to them. Uh, let's keep a, a civilized tone. No, I mean no, no personal attacks. Obviously, it's, it, it doesn't serve anyone. And. Um, so this is my channel ancient and chinese astrology if you are resonating with it if you'd like to subscribe or like the video i would appreciate it and yes if you'd like to leave a comment yes i would appreciate it uh thank you